another reading with Mr. White with me, Mr. White, this, the Nowhere Emporium, and this, uh, my son's bedroom, actually. Um, so we're on to chapter 31 today. We are so close to the end. There's only 37 chapters. Are you excited? I am. It's called Memoriam, but can you remember what happened last time in chapter 30? Chapter 30 was really, really dramatic. Daniel and Ellie went to the Library of Souls and there was a strange hooded figure there. And the Library of Souls, you can find the book to everybody's life, everybody that has lived and everybody that is going to live. So they thought they were being clever. They went to find Vindictus Sharp's um, book. And when they found it, it was a really, really big book. The reason it was a really big book is that his life has been going on for ages, hasn't it? Because he's been stealing life from other people. When they've opened it up to find out about his life, uh, all the words started jumbling and moving around. And it was because he's been a bit naughty in the past, really. And that's what this strange hooded figure told them. So then they had a bright idea. They went to find Mr. Silver's book. They found Mr. Silver's book. And they were having a little read through just to try and find out where Mr. Silver might be and what on earth is going on between him and uh, Vindictus Sharp. Then all of the bookshelves and things started falling down in this in this um, what's the, this strange place uh, into the inky water. So they've kind of uh, they've had to flee on this boat. The strange hooded figure went. They fell into the water and then eventually they got out. Um, and it seemed like all hope was lost, but then a flash of light and one of the magpies arrived again, knocked the Book of Wonders out of Daniel's hand and was kind of telling Daniel to have a look at it. Daniel's looked at it and he's got a bright idea that we don't know what it is. We're about to find out. Are you sitting comfortably? I know I am. Let's go. Chapter 31, Memorium. En route to their destination, Daniel and Ellie made one detour, visiting Mr. Silver's apartments and collecting a long brown hair from his pillow. The hair was not difficult to find. Mr. Silver had enough of them after all. The Book of Wonders says we need one of his hairs for this to work, said Daniel. I'm not really sure why, he squinted at the page in question. His writing gets pretty bad sometimes. I guess there's only one way to find out. The Emporium was becoming impossible to navigate safely. Patches of creeping, creeping nothingness were appearing more and more, sucking wonders into the void, weakening the rest of the Emporium, which was decaying like a row of bad teeth. Oh, that's an amazing description in there, isn't that? Brilliant. Not only were, the, were there dangers in the form of fallen bridges, caved in passageways and flooding tunnels, but Daniel also found that his sense of direction was almost completely gone. Thankfully, the surviving magpie became a guide. When they arrived at the door in a corridor full of mirrors, Daniel leaned close to the gold nameplate. Memorium, this is it. From somewhere deep in the Emporium came a rumble. The floor trembled. Daniel ran his fingers along the wall, tracing hairline cracks. Through the door lay a movie theatre with a carpet, the colour of fresh blood, and row upon row of seats padded with red velvet, all facing a huge screen. Something happened to the air beside Daniel and the shadows moved, turning into the shape of a man. The man was tall and gaunt with sandpaper rough skin and a patch over his left eye. He wore a black uniform with gold piping and carried a torch. He smelt of dust and sugar. He said, I am your usher for this evening. How may I be of assistance? Uh, how does this work? asked Daniel. The usher smiled. We show you the past plucked from memories, the true past, mind you, not coloured by bias or age or worn away by time. Everything exactly as it happened. The price is a single hair. What we want to see, said Ellie, it's not our own past. It belongs to someone else. The usher's gold eye flicked between Daniel and Ellie. Sorry, the usher's good eye flicked between Daniel and Ellie. Do you have a hair that belongs to this person? They nodded. <clears throat> then we do not have a problem, said the usher. Take a seat, please. He led them to the front row, directly beneath the screen, and signalled that they should sit. He held out a hand. Payment. Ellie took Mr. Silver's hair from her pocket, placed it in the usher's hand. He brought it up close to his good eye. Then he took off his hat, revealing the strangest head of hair Daniel had ever seen. A large section of his head was completely bald, 
but there were places here and there where hair sprouted. The hair was many different colours and many different lengths. The usher took Silver's hair. He produced a sewing needle from the pocket of his uniform. He threaded the hair through the eye of the needle. Then he raised the needle to his head, pressed the end into his scalp and proceeded to sew Mr Silver's hair into his own head. Oh my word. When he was finished, sorry, when he was satisfied that the hair was in place, he replaced his hat and sat in the empty seat next to Daniel, who had watched all of this with horrified fascination. <clears throat> now we can begin, the usher said. What exactly would you like to see? We need to find out the story between Mr Silver and Vindictus Sharp, said Daniel. Anything from Silver's memories that can help us understand Sharp a little better. And if there's anything in there we can use against him, then all the better. The usher gave a thoughtful nod. Very well. He sat back in the chair beside Daniel, raised a hand to his face and lifted his eye patch. Daniel could not help looking. He caught a glimpse of the usher's hollow yet hollow eye socket, just as the lights of the theatre died away, leaving the place in darkness. Then the usher's body, straightened out, became rigid, and a beam of white light erupted from his empty eye and thundered onto the screen. A crackling noise tickled Daniel's ears like the scratching of a record. The screen was filled with flashes of white, which slowly resolved into a grainy picture. A snow-covered city in the dead of night, a lone figure climbing the steps of a serious-looking building covered in gargoyles. And they saw it all. Lucy and Silver, the frightened little boy teased by the other children, rescued from loneliness and torment by a mysterious stranger, on a freezing Edinburgh night. Remember that? That was ages ago, wasn't it? Right at the start of the book. The years of teaching, of perfecting the art of magic, of mistakes and, mis and missteps punished by beatings and rainy days spent gazing through the narrow windows of a mansion, wishing that he did not have the gift, longing to be like everyone else. So this is like a big flashback scene now, isn't it? They're kind of flicking through uh, Mr Silver's life. The scene shifted. Lucian gave his first performance in the grand sitting room of a townhouse in front of only Sharp and an old woman named Birdie. Oh, remember Birdie? And then the performances began, a whirlwind lifestyle of travel and fame. Packed theatres across the globe were transfixed by the magic of Sharp and Silver. But it was easy to see that a shadow was growing in Sharp's heart, fed by the jealousy of his prodigy's talent. Lucian's invention of the Book of Wonders seemed to be the final blow, and by the time Daniel and Ellie had watched Birdie's funeral, Sharp had abandoned Lucian, cast him back to the harsh reality of the world. A cloud of steam filled the theatre, and when it had cleared, the screen showed Edinburgh once more. Lucian Silver stepped from a train, and he was much more like the Mr Silver that Daniel knew, confident and proud. When he opened the doors of the Emporium for the first time, his customers were afforded a view of a magical world unlike anything they had ever seen. And then Sharp was back and Silver was walking the Emporium arm in arm with Michelle and he was happier than Daniel had ever seen. But the good times did not last. Daniel gasped when Michelle betrayed Mr Silver. Ellie grabbed his arm tight when she witnessed her father drop to his knees, his book of wonders gone, stolen by the love of his life. Ellie's grip only tightened when Silver answered the door on a rainy night one year later to, dis to discover a baby on his doorstep, a note slipped between the blankets. A baby. <gasps> Who could that baby be? Who do you think? I think I know. Next, they were following Lucian as he strode with purpose up a street lined with maple trees and huge houses. Lucian paused at the gates of the largest house beside a nameplate bearing the name Vindictus Sharp. He stared through the bars, then he ran his fingers over the locks and the gate was open and Lucian was striding up the steps towards the front door. Something happened in the picture then. It began to stretch and distort and break apart. There was a familiar face, a sneering vindictive sharp, who made them jump in their seats and after that neither Daniel nor Ellie could make out anything beside the muffled, muffled sound of voices and a scream and a flash of red. The lights of the theatre blinked softly back to life, casting the place in a warm amber glow. What happened? said Daniel. We need to know what happened next. In the seat beside him, the usher, whose expression, oops, whose expression had been vacant throughout the showing, blinked his good eye. He sat up. He replaced his eye patch and gazed through the theatre as if he was seeing it for the first time. 
Then he looked at Daniel and his eyebrows knitted. Hmm, well, that, uh, that's never happened before, he said, removing his hat and scratching at the, pa at the patchwork of hair on his scalp. Put it back on, said Ellie. Fix it. Can't do it, said the usher. There's no way to play back the final scene. It has been tampered with. Someone does not want it to be seen. Simple as that. Whatever it is you wish to uncover, I'm afraid it's going to remain a secret. Something stirred in Daniel's brain. A secret? The world faded around him. In his mind, he was no longer in the theatre. He was back in his early days at the Emporium, on the night he first wrote in the Book of Wonders. Back in a room full of secrets. May I have the honour of leaving the first secret in this room? Mr Silver had asked. Can you remember that? Can you remember that from all those chapters ago? Oh, I can. Daniel leapt out of his seat, grabbed Ellie by the arm and began to pull her back up the aisle towards the exit. Daniel, let go! Would you please tell me what's going on? They clattered out of the door, leaving the old theatre in silence once again. The usher climbed from his seat and watched after them. He scratched his chin. Hmm, what a strange pair, he said. The light died once more, and with a flutter in the darkness, he was gone. Where do you think Daniel is going? I think I know. And oh, that was a brilliant chapter because all those things, like those little flashbacks from uh, Mr. Silver's life, I can remember all of them. It was abs absolutely fantastic. Right, next chapter is called uh, Silver's Secret. I hope you'll join us next time. I know I will. See you later. Bye bye. <laughs>